I recorded this podcast episode on April 3rd, 2022. One of the more popular ones I ever did. You'll hear more about my story, which I hope you enjoy and find value in. Hit subscribe, buckle in, see you there. Hey, what's up everyone? Trent here, solo episode today. My guest canceled last second and I said, rather than just not doing an episode for you guys this week, I'm going to step up and make it the absolute best one yet. I was just staring into my soul in my bathroom, looking into my eyes and my mirror saying, okay, Trent, you're not that funny. You're not that smart. You're not the best storyteller. What are you going to talk about by yourself for 30 minutes? If I were presenting on a stage in front of a thousand people, which is probably the amount of people who are actually going to listen to this episode, I would be pretty nervous right now because I really haven't prepared. But being in the comfort of my own home, With my mic, with my two ring lights, confidence is at an all-time high. And I'm going to talk to you guys today about what does sales prestige actually mean. I'm going to tell my story, who I am, where I started, how I got to this point I am today. And then I'm going to talk about my software sales playbook to closing $1 million in revenue. Over the last six quarters that I've been an account executive, I've never missed my quota. And my total quota, get this, the numbers don't lie. My total quota over the last six quarters was $571,825. And I closed $1.2 million, um, $1,226,635. I'm not an accountant. I'm not the best with numbers. But I do like to quote high to customers and close large deals. So Clearly close over a million dollars. That's verified. That's legit. And I'm going to talk about my playbook to getting to that point. I'm a 26-year-old guy. I live by myself, senior account executive. And I'm going to tell my story in a moment. But I want to talk about what sales prestige means to me because I wanted to make a podcast for the longest time. I like to listen to podcasts. I've made over 570 YouTube videos in the last year and a half. My dream was always to make content, help people add value, and then make money online. I thought if I could make money online, I feel like that would be the pinnacle of personal finance. So I saw a Graham Stephan video one day. He made a million dollars making YouTube videos. And I said, okay, I have to start making YouTube videos. So that's what led to me to starting to create content. I usually make eight to 12 minute videos. And then I said, you know what? I want to have a podcast. I like to watch Impulsive, All In Podcasts, My First Million. There's so many podcasts I like to listen to. So I said, hey, why not build my own podcast? And how cool would that be if I could make my own podcast that people actually enjoy to listen to? So I don't know if you guys actually enjoy to listen, but I enjoy doing it. Um, So hopefully we can build the audience and I'm committed to adding you value. And I have absolutely nothing to sell you. I don't know if there's another sales podcast out there that isn't actually trying to sell you something or doesn't actually have a sponsor. We will be the biggest sales podcast in a matter of a year. So just give it some time. So sales prestige, what does it mean to me? So when I came to that conclusion, look, I want to start a podcast. The very first thing you got to think about is what is your name? And you in your own life, if you've ever thought about starting something like a blog, a podcast, a YouTube channel, a Shopify store, an NFT project, whatever it may be, the very first point you need to start and ask yourself is, what am I going to call it? What is the name? So I was in my own head for literally two weeks. I was trying to think of a name. My first instinct went to dialed in. I thought that'd be a super cool name. And I thought of a list of dozens of names. And I knew it was going to be a guest-based podcast. Today, we have no guests. We're going solo. We got some big guests on the way, though, believe me. So I started researching what drives people. And I'm a male, so I can speak to the challenges I face as a guy and what drives me. 90% of the audience here are males. So I'm speaking to the guys out there for the most part. But for those ladies, this may be helpful for you to understand what drives guys. And I thought about it and I said, okay, I saw a YouTube video of a Lamborghini. And I said, okay, Lamborghinis are cool, but are the cars the actual desire that people want? Or is it the status of knowing, hey, I have a Lambo and you can't have it? So I started to research the word status. And then I saw a synonym of it, which was prestige. And then I learned that guys are intrinsically driven for social standing and status because the higher your status, the higher standing you have in the community, the more access you have to contested resources such as mating partners. And then that drives you to have security during wartime as well. So guys want status. Guys want people to view them as the guy with the title, with all the money. And that's what drives a lot of us, including myself, whether we like it or not. That's how we evolutionarily are programmed. So when I reverse engineered that, I said, okay, you guys 
don't actually care about the sales training. I'm sure a lot of you do. And I like self-development, but I don't actually like to do it, but I still do it. So it starts with the self-development. It starts with the sales training. As a byproduct of that, it helps you become more productive in your job because knowledge leads to productivity. So the more productive you are in your sales job, the better you're going to perform the higher your status in society is going to rise because you're going to make more money, you're going to have a better title, and then it's going to be that loop of what you actually want. And I do sales, so I can talk about my experience being in the trenches each and every day. So that's a long-winded way of saying we're talking about sales, and I want you to have prestige in your own life, and I want prestige as well. And when I think about that, it's leveling up. I feel like we are naturally driven to strive to reach that next level. And if you think about Call of Duty, I used to play a lot of video games, a lot of Call of Duty. It was prestiging. It would be you play a game until you get a certain amount of XP and then you reach that next level and you prestige up. And the levels in and of themselves don't actually matter. But you being a a level three prestige or a 10th prestige maxed out, it's that little symbol of other people in the lobby saying, oh, this person's a, a ninth prestige. That means they're probably pretty good. So naturally, you have more respect in the Call of Duty community. So I want to help you prestige in your own life, particularly as it relates to your sales career, fitness, life, money. And that's the whole purpose of this podcast is to help you get to the next level in whatever it is you're trying to get to the next level for. Me in my own life, I'm trying to get to the next level in so many things. That's why I show up. That's why I take massive action. And that's why I make podcasts like this. And it wasn't always like this. I haven't always been this driven. When I was in high school, all I cared about was playing video games. That was it. I went to college. All I cared about was partying, hanging out with friends. I got into the real world right in 2018 after I graduated from college. I moved myself from Ohio to Texas. And I went out every weekend because I was trying to meet people. I just moved to a new city. I was starting to make a little bit of money. You go out every weekend, you black out one, two nights a week, and it's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of people, you have a lot of memories, and it's cool, right? And and that's it. And many of you that are early in your career, that's probably the experience you're having. And then I got to a point where I said, you know what? I want more. I want to live a great life. I want to be able to live in whatever zip code I want to be able to live in. I want to be able to have a fantastic house. I want to send my kids to the best schools possible and provide them with a great life. And I believe how I live in my 20s is going to directly impact and correlate the lifestyle I'm able to live in my 30s and 40s. So I said, I need to put in the work now. I need to stop wasting time. And I feel like I got to that point ahead of a lot of people around my age because when you're in your young 20s, it's all about having fun. It's all about partying. It's all about living in the moment. And then I got to the point where I said, all that's really great and it's really hard to give up. And you have this expectation with friends that you're going to be there. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. But if you're hungover, if you're always low on sleep, if you're not focused more on your goals and taking action, then you're not going to actually do those things. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go all in because I want to prestige in my own life. I want to prestige in my career. I want to build an online community with like-minded people. And then ultimately getting to that point of going all in is what helped me level up in my career. I started out as a sales development representative. I'm now a senior account executive. I'm super transparent about my pay as you guys see on the videos on my channel is that right out of college, I was making $50,000 a year. And when I say making, it's not actual recognized money. I think there's confusion around this. It's on target earnings, which stands OTE, on target earnings. I, was, I, I set out the acronym. There's a lot of acronyms in, in technology, especially software sales. So that that's a combination of your base pay, which is your salary fixed, and then also your variable pay, which is your commission, essentially how you perform relative to your quota. So early in my career as an SDR is $50,000. I feel like I had more money than I ever knew what to do with. And in less than four years, I promoted six times and I have increased my on-target earnings to $206,000 a year at age 26. That may sound cool, but it's really not that much money. It, it On paper, it looks good. Um, but we're trying to grow our income because 
I want to be an accredited investor. And I feel like that that's the benchmark we all should be striving for. That means making at least $200,000 a year trailing in the last two years or having at least a million dollars in investable assets. That's the absolute baseline to start playing the game, to be able to invest in private market, to be able to do a lot of different things to get exposure access. And we're not there yet. So that's why I feel like I have to work extra hard in not only my career, but also outside of the office, building my own infrastructure and distribution with this podcast, with the channel, trying to add value at scale, trying to connect with other like-minded people. And ultimately, I want to build a community of other people who aspire to do great things in life. Um, And that's really the purpose and why I'm here. And to bring this back to Texas full circle, I was living in the city. I had all these big dreams. I, I, I knew I had something inside me that says, Trent, you can do more and you can give more as well, but the lifestyle you're living, it just is not going to let you maximize your potential and get to that point. So I ended up moving up north to a place called Plano. That's where we're recording right now in the $10 million studio. And behind the scenes, I've been working in my software sales job tirelessly. And then out of the office, I make content almost daily. Um, And that's really my story. That's who I am. I've had to grow a lot throughout the journey. I've had to sacrifice a lot. I've met a lot of people. I've lost friends in the process. I've accumulated some wealth. And it's all a part of the journey. And and that's what I can't reiterate to you guys enough. It's my personal journey. And what may be right for me may not be right for you. Because ultimately, success is relative. If everyone had a million dollars a year, then it wouldn't be as cool anymore. If everyone was an enterprise rep at the best software company, then that wouldn't be as prestigious anymore. So it starts with what do you want? And that will determine your actions to get to the place you want to go. I know a lot of you want to level up in your sales career like I have. And I have demonstrated moving from an SDR to an account executive. And that's why many of you guys watch. I want to now talk about my playbook, my success principles for getting to a million dollars in closed revenue. And when I first started my software sales career, this did not seem feasible because as an SDR, I didn't really know what to say. I knew how to cold call. But once you get on that initial meeting, you're like, I hope my account executive shows up or I have no clue what's going to happen here. And and you feel like you don't have the control. So whenever you go from SDR to account executive, you got to step up and say, okay, it's on me. I got to figure it out. I got to do whatever it takes, let alone a million dollars in revenue. And when you put in perspective how much that actually is, If you were to build your own SaaS software as a service company and you were to do a million dollars in sales and ARR, annual recurring revenue, the revenue multiple valuation of that company would probably be anywhere 10 to 15x, meaning you would have built a 10 to $15 million company. So just to put this in perspective, given it's much easier when you're working for a big company with a brand, with resources... So that's not to say if I were to start a company tomorrow, I'd be able to do a million dollars. But these principles in this playbook I'm going to share with you right now is proven, is working for a public SaaS company, $15 billion market cap, commercial account executive, meaning I sell to companies less than $2 billion in revenue. My average deal size is anywhere from 15 to 20K ish. Typically skews a little smaller around that that 10 uh, 10 to 15K ish, but it's starting to increase over time. So principle number one is it doesn't matter if you are a top performer, if nobody knows who you are. And I can't reiterate this enough. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I've made in my career is not putting myself out there earlier and sooner. Not everyone has something to say, but if you aspire to have big goals, big things in life, money follows attention. And the more attention you have, it's going to be so much easier to achieve those things. Think about this right now. You would have no idea who I am, what I stand for, sales prestige. All of this was just an idea. And I'm just another random person. But the only reason you are listening to me right now is because I made the conscious decision. I'm going to put myself out there. I want to blow up. Although I am a top performer and I was a top performer for the two years that I never made a piece of content, it didn't really matter because nobody knew who I was. And Even if you're average, but if you have a big voice, a big platform, that will naturally elevate you. And let me just share a few stories that this has helped me. And because a lot of you say, oh, I want to have the money, but I don't want to have the fame. And I think that that's the common sentiment. And that's even what I want as well. I'm not trying to be massively famous, 
but I do need attention because attention helps you be more successful. Look at the case of the Kardashians. They have so much attention, it creates distribution, and all of a sudden they can create some sort of cosmetic line that generates a billion dollars in sales in less than a year, literally in clockwork just like that. If you look at these successful companies, what do they have in common? They have familiarity, they have trust, they have brand recognition. Think about this. Would you ever buy something or from someone that you didn't know who they are, in order to make that sale, that prospect, you need to grab their attention to even begin the initial sales cycle. I don't make content to try and help me in my sales job. Some people like to post on LinkedIn articles, content to their buyer personas, to their community to generate pipeline. That's not my approach. I think that's a fine approach, but not something I'm trying to do. I'm trying to connect with other like-minded people specifically salespeople, because I have a unique perspective coming from a place of someone who is actually in the trenches doing the sales job. So I make sales content every day so that one, I have a brand outside of my company. If I ever were to leave my current employer, I would be able to get 10 job offers with a click of my fingers in less than a week. Guarantee it, no problem. I even have the connections now that have been built through this. So the brand outside the company, one, from a hiring standpoint, if you need it, I think that that's an upside. And also, two, from a distribution standpoint, it's cool to be able to make content and reach a large, large audience. It's a snowball. It keeps growing. And I have aspirations of one day of eventually building my own software company. So if I'm connected with thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of other salespeople, if I could create a SaaS product that helps you in your job, there's no reason why you wouldn't buy it if you know me if you know that I've been providing value and doing it the right way for years, I'm playing the long game. And that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to do this. And then also on the other side of the coin, internally at my own company, building the content has helped me get exposure to senior leadership in a way that not a lot of other reps probably have access to. Senior leadership is looking at total performance. They look at all the reps and look at all the regions. And, and if you consistently perform, that's good. But if you're constantly showing up on their LinkedIn feed, if you're constantly showing up as somebody recognized at sales kickoffs or whatever, people are going to know who you are. And that can be a good thing or it can work against you. Some people come in with preconceived negotiations of who I am, what I stand for, because I say some ridiculous things sometimes. Um, and, and it's all a part, it's all a part of the game. But then once you start talking, you're like, okay, you're just a normal person like me, but it's helped me get exposure to people and senior leaders that potentially will have influence on my career path. And if they know who I am and I have similar performance to this girl who maybe has slightly better performance, but if they know who I am, who do you think is going to be put on their team? It's a person who they actually know who they are. So it doesn't matter if you're a top performer, if nobody knows who you are. And I know you're thinking, okay, Trent, you close a million dollars. How, how does that have anything to do with it? Here's what it has to do with it. When you start deciding consciously to build a personal brand to blow up so people know who you are, it naturally is going to put a target on your back. So if you're, if you're going to put up and not show up, then you're going to be a phony. So when I started putting myself out there, it put enormous pressure on me to show up and perform and to do the job well. And I think that pressure helped me actually grow because I said, if I'm talking all of this nonsense on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on TikTok, but I'm not actually putting up numbers, that's a problem. So it forces me to say, I got to back it up because I'm not just another sales guy telling you what you should be doing. I'm telling you what I'm doing and what is working. And I'm going to continue down the path and exactly what has worked for me to close over $1 million in revenue. Sales principle number two, this is also part of the playbook completely for free, is master the fundamentals of pipeline generation. Early in my YouTube career, I only talked about sales development because that was the world I knew. I started as an SDR. I spent two full years as a sales development rep. A lot of people get impatient. A lot of people move on. A lot of people take that early promo job hop to another company to become an account executive. But I did not because I said... I'm going to stay in this role and master it. And when I am ready, I will move to account executive. And I know that I will absolutely crush it. So as we think about pipeline generation, it's very simple. As an account executive, you have a quarterly quota. Let's say it's $100,000 in revenue that you need to generate for the firm. In order to put yourself in the best position possible to close $100,000 in revenue this quarter, you need at least three to five X pipeline to have enough deal flow to actually recognize the revenue. 
three to five X pipeline would mean three hundred thousand to five hundred thousand dollars in pipeline. Pipeline is basically deals that have the potential to close for that dollar amount. So I could have a deal with McDonald's for fifteen thousand dollars. I could have a deal with Tesla for a hundred thousand dollars. And that just means that we're in the sales cycle. So it could be just a discovery call. We've only met with them once. Or we could be, be negotiating a contract. And that's a higher probability deal likelihood of closing. But ultimately, mastering the fundamentals of pipeline generation will put you in the best position possible to succeed as an account executive. Because if you don't hit quota, it, it, it may not be because you don't have the skills. It may be because you didn't have enough pipeline. And I said, what is one of the few things in my control as an account executive? It's my daily effort to generate pipeline. So it's being very consistent with finding new prospects every morning, sending those prospects tailored messaging every day, and then triggering a sequence in which I call and email that prospect in rapid succession over 12 times over a 21 day period. So it goes back to the attention thing. I need to get their attention. I need to interrupt them out of the blue in order to set up an initial meeting so that I can generate pipeline. So mastering the fundamentals of pipeline generation absolutely has helped separate me because I think there's this notion that you outpromote the need to do the dirty work. I feel like each promotion makes me have to do the dirty work even more to sustain my success. The dirty work is cold calling, rolling up your sleeves and doing whatever it takes to generate demand in your accounts to get pipeline. Sales principle number three, take massive action while going fast. I think that this is another thing that separates me from other people is because early in my career, I said, I'm not naturally the best. I don't have the best pitch. I sound like a pushy used car salesman. I'm naturally introverted. I don't know what to say. I don't have any connections. I don't have any past internships or jobs, anything in this industry. So I showed up day one and I wasn't naturally the best. And I was just average. I was trying to be average because I didn't know what it looked like to be above average until I learned that you truly have to take massive action. And all that means is more activity than other people. You know the activities that you need to do to become more successful. They're easy to do. They're also easy not to do. And it's as basic as just making more calls than everyone else. I guarantee I made more calls than every other corporate account executive in my company last year. I can say that with almost certainty with a straight face. And that directly correlated to my success. I'm not trying to say I'm better than anyone else, but I am saying that I'm willing to put in more action than absolutely anyone else. And that's just a personal decision. Maybe that's me coming from a place of growing up, doing tough jobs like mowing lawns, um, not doing some stupid job with a corporation, but I'd rather babysitting, making money, doing odd jobs, whatever I could to make money. And I feel like you develop that work ethic so when you get in this point, a lot of other people maybe come from a place of not having to do jobs like that. So they don't know what it truly is like. I'm not saying they're not working hard, but there's no excuse not to be making your calls. It's as simple as that. And, and taking massive action fast means you don't overthink and you just go forward. And this is what I see with a lot of new reps who don't find immediate success. It's because they don't move fast and they don't move forward. And that just looks like not thinking and pressing dial and then also doing your territory plan and just being responsive to customers. And it's going fast. It's not waiting. With this podcast, so, so look at this, guys. I, I was telling someone, I said, I'm going to start a podcast. Less than two weeks later, I already had four episodes recorded. I thought of the sales prestige name. And once I thought of the name, I said, that's the name. That resonates. That fits me. I think that that will resonate with other people. The very next day, the very next day, I called my friend and I said, hey, do you want to be on episode one? I'm going to record it today. And he said, yeah, let's do it. Within 24 hours of thinking of the name, I recorded episode one and then published it that night. Published it that night. Within 24 hours of thinking the name, we record the episode and press publish. That is going fast. So as I continue to make mistakes and identify areas to get better, the faster you go, the faster you can improve. And that's going to bring you more success in all areas of life, including your sales job. The next principle in the sales playbook is to write down your goals daily. This is also another area of opportunity. I can't reiterate this enough. I keep looking at these and I say, Trent, they're so basic. Um, why are you even saying these? But they're, they're almost so obvious to me that I think not a lot of people are thinking about these. And the analogy I like to share is 
Who's more likely to achieve their goals? Somebody who writes down their goals and targets 700 times a year or someone who just writes down their goals around New Year's resolution? I write down my goals twice a day in my journal. I even bought a whiteboard to write down my goals. And when I get into the office, I write down my revenue target. And what I've found is when you have a clear target, it allows you to work towards your targets and not focus so much on the problems because problems will always be there. Obstacles will always present themselves in your way. And when I started writing down my goals and setting massive targets, the deal started to come to me. I know it sounds crazy, but whenever you start to identify, and and I know it sounds like, oh, ethereal law of attraction stuff, but whenever you know what you want and start taking action, massive action quickly in that direction, all of a sudden, things start to present themselves. And there's a path that starts to become more clear. And if you don't know what you want, that path will never present itself because you don't know what way you're supposed to walk. So think about what you want, action item from this episode. If you have not written down your goals in the last week, you're doing something wrong and you're missing a big opportunity. Think about what you want and go write it down and write it down as much as you can and write it wherever you are so that you know what your actions are actually working towards. The next principle is going all in. This is self-explanatory, but all in to me means burning the ships. And the timeless story is imagine you're a war commander. Imagine you're a soldier. Okay, with your war commander, Trent, on the Sales Prestige podcast, you are going to take your enemy's land. Okay, and I'm not an advocate of war, but I'm saying if we were going to war and we were going to take the native land, we take all of our army men and ships to this island, we land on the island, and me as the commander, I say, first task, burn the ships. And they're going to say, well, Trent, we, we can't go back in that case. That's the point. When you are all in, you are either going to do whatever it takes to achieve that outcome or you are going to die. And in corporate America, you're most certainly not going to die. But you may come up with some excuse like, oh, it's just not fair. My territory is not good enough. I'm burnt out. I just want to work remotely. I want it to be easier. Don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. And going all in is adopting that mentality of I will do whatever it takes to be successful. And that means I may fail. And that means I may look stupid. That means I may not make the money I want to make. And that's okay. Because if you're playing the long game, you will find a way. You will get better. You will continuously improve. And that will set you up to be successful. And I know I know that this stuff is pretty heady, guys. This is high level. You can't listen to that and then say, practically, this is what I would apply. But I, I love thinking about mindset because I think that this is one of the great equalizers amongst other people is because... You can't control your talent. You can't control your experience. You can't control your looks. You can't control your voice. You can't control a lot of things, but you can control your effort and the way you think. So if you show up with this mentality of all in, I'm ready to die on the sword or make this happen, aka hit my quota, you're, you're going to be a whole nother level up from everyone around you because you're willing to do whatever it takes. The final principle here, guys, is to become a learning machine. I talked about this on the channel yesterday, but I listened to an interview with one of the board of directors from Amazon. And they said, what do you think makes Jeff Bezos so special? And they said, he is a learning machine. He naturally was was smart, but everything he needed to learn to scale a business, to hire, to create new product lines, he went and learned it. And the faster he was able to learn it, fail, and then relearn, That is how you continue to grow and scale and evolve as a person. And that is how you get to the next level. And that is how you reach prestige. That is how you reach status. And that's how you get whatever you want out of life. It's all about identifying what do I want? Where are the gaps? What is holding me back? What are the obstacles? And then how can I go learn the necessary information to go reach that outcome? Everything you ever could need to know is written in a book today to achieve that. All the information you ever could need to know to do whatever goal you want is most likely for free online to a certain point. Um, And I I take that with a grain of salt, but there's all the information in the world out there. You most likely have some sort of learning management system or sales enablement platform that literally tells you what exactly to say to build the most value with your customers. But when's the last time you go refresh yourself on medic, command of message, um, value, execution technology, we use a VET framework, When is the last time you looked at what are the pieces of the puzzle, metric, economic buyer, decision maker, decision criteria, timeline, compelling event, budget? When is the last time you said, okay, this is, this is what I do to build value. This is, this is very simple, black and white, how I do sales. 
And then you write down questions to uncover those answers. And then you understand product knowledge, market knowledge, industry knowledge. You put all that together and then you show up free flowing. And all of a sudden you start to get better at your job. And it's, it's like anything you want to do in life. You just have to go learn it and get better at it, guys. We are officially about 29-ish minutes deep in the podcast. I feel like I was just staring into my eyes in the mirror like I am to you in the camera right now. And then all of a sudden we're 30 minutes deep in the podcast. If you've ever thought to yourself, man, I wish I could do a podcast, but I don't have anyone to do it with. I don't have anything to talk about. I don't know if I can do it. I don't like the sound of my voice. I had all those insecurities as well until I said, you know what? I'm just going to buy a mic. I'm going to buy a camera. I'm going to buy some lights. And then I'm going to sit down in front of my computer and talk to myself for 30 minutes straight so that I can hopefully make an impact to a handful of people out there to add value to their life, to give them entertainment, to help them get to the next level. And that is what we are doing and building here at Sales Prestige. So if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe to the channel now, however you may be listening, watching, viewing. I appreciate you. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye.